Peace and peace to you, all oh my beloved. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the 30th day of the sixth month of the year 2020. Uh, the last day, actually. Very soon we'll be entering into July and then full speed to December. That is how fast the days are going, my beloved. Tick says the clock, tick, tick what you have to do do quick and the most important thing that you and i have to do is to make sure that we have given our lives to jesus christ and that we are ready for his second coming okay uh, the temperature here is uh 79 degrees Celsius fahrenheit which makes it 26.1 degrees celsius okay it's and it's going to be very, fairly hot. Uh, yesterday was 90 degrees, and I believe we'll be getting to that mark today too, by the grace of God. Listen, the Lord is good. There's a message in the book of Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 1. I love it. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 1. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 1. Please take your Bible and let's look at it. It says, the bedding of the word of the Lord. The bedding of the word of the Lord for Israel save the lord which stretches save the lord who amen stretches the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him just listen to what he's saying the god who stretches the heavens okay the god who stretches the heavens the God who lays the foundation of the earth and the God who puts his spirit in man. Three things. The heavens that you see, the earth that you and I walk upon, and man, we're all created by God. He's the one who stretched, he stretched the heavens. The heavens that you see, the sky that you see, he stretched the heavens over the earth. He is the same one who's established the very foundation of this earth. Wow! And he's the one who has created you and I and put his spirit in us. That's God. My beloved, if there is somebody like that who made all these things, don't you think that the best thing for you and I, or the wisest thing for you and I to do is to seek to know him? Is to seek to know him. You know, he is my creator. He is the one who stretched the heavens. He is the one who founded, laid the foundations of the earth. That makes him almighty. What else? What other things didn't he create? If he created all these things, the heavens and the earth, and man, don't you think that he's the same one who created all things and if he is the one who created all things don't you think that the wisest thing for you and i to do as humans is to seek to know him is to seek to know him to seek to know him because if if you get to know him if he is not almighty and all powerful and you and i get to know him and to know his ways don't you think that would be the most prudent thing to do as a human being. But sadly though, there are so many of us walking around trying to deny his very existence, trying to deny that there is somebody, there's a, a deity, a being called God, capital G-O-D, God. No, we want to deny it. You know, we've, we've given elevated signs above <laughs> The one who created science. We've elevated astrology or astronomy above the creator. That is the foolishness of man. The Bible says that the wisdom of man is foolishness unto God. God is real, my beloved. And you cannot know him like you study science. No, 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 no. I mean, just, just because you have an idea, mental idea of a being, doesn't mean that you know him. Talking about knowing him in knowing God is inviting him into your life.
to become part and parcel in your life. Okay? We know God by faith. We know God by faith in believing that he is. He said, he who will come to God must know that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him diligently. This God who created the heavens, this God who stretched the heavens in the sky, this God who spills or who plasters the heavens with clouds, this God who laid the very foundation of the earth, and this God who put his spirit in you and I to become living souls. He's saying that the only way you can know him is to open your heart so he will come and live in you. Wow! My! That is the greatest blessing that you and I can ever have for the God who spread the heavens, who stretched the heavens that you see, the heavens that you see planes flying, you know, in the skies. You see birds. That's heaven, that's heaven. So high, difficult for any human to reach it. I shudder to think that, you know, if any of this, our spacecrafts and air, all those things have been able to go all the way to touch the highest heights of the skies, of the heavens that God has spread. It's, when you look at it, it looks like it is very close. But the, far, highest, the, the higher you go, the higher it moves away from you. But God spread that. That talks about his sovereignty, how powerful, how mighty he is. And yet he's more than willing to make himself known to you and I. By virtue of your, you and I inviting him to come and live in our hearts. And he comes to indwell us by faith. And when he comes in to live in us, he transforms our lives. We are never the same. We will never be the same. When he comes to live in your hearts, the, just the proof of you knowing God is the transformation of your life. Okay? You cannot know God and be the same. No, no, you cannot know God and be the same and be doing the things that you used to do. You cannot know God by being a wicked person. You cannot go, go, go God and remain a, know God and remain a, a, a wicked person. You cannot know God and remain a murderer. You cannot know God and be somebody who aborts baby. You cannot know God and live any kind of abominable lifestyle. No. When God comes to live in your heart, and how does he come to live in your heart? Through faith. Through faith. By receiving Jesus Christ, his son, as your Lord and personal savior. And Jesus Christ is God incarnate. And so God comes to live in your heart through your belief, your faith in his son, Jesus Christ. And when it comes to live in your heart and in my heart, it transforms us. What does Zechariah chapter, one, chapter 12 verse 1 say? Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, who stretched the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and put the spirit, the spirit into man. My beloved, thus says he. It is my prayer that this God will come and indwell your heart. This God will be your God, be your Lord, be your savior, be your deliverer, especially in this difficult time. If he created the heavens and the earth, what is it in this world that can prevail against him? No virus can prevail against him. No, 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 no virus can prevail against him. No sickness can prevail against him. No power can prevail against him. Nothing. He's God Almighty. He's God Almighty. Everything is subjected to him. And every knee bows at the mention of this, his name, Jesus Christ. At the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, his son, to whom he has given a name that is above every name. My beloved, let us receive this God into our hearts. Let him become the Lord of our lives. Let God 
through Jesus Christ, come to live in your heart and in my heart. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 23, it says, He who believes on the Son and loves the Son and does obey the commandment, the word of God, such a one is the one that God will come and indwell him. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they will make their abode in him. May you and I be recipients of such a great promise, okay? As we seek to know him and to make him our all in all. Grace and peace to you and God bless. Bye-bye.